Don't take that for granted. Don't take that for granted, praise God. The privilege that we have to call upon the name of Jesus. Praise God. Because there is power in the name. When you declare his name out of your heart, praise God, out of your spirit. Hallelujah. The demons have to tremble. Things have to stop. Isn't that right? They, they obey that name. Praise God. So we thank God this morning for being favored of him. Favored of him. Blessed. And listen, we, we are highly favored this morning. That the blood of the lamb was shed for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. That now, now, we can have a true, true relationship. True relationship with him. Praise God. So we thank the Lord this morning for all things. Let's continue to look up. Our God is totally, totally, totally faithful. He's totally faithful. Listen, he, he is totally devoted to us. He's devoted to you. He's devoted to me. Is that right? And we have to hold on to his word. We sang something the other day out of Psalms 89 and 34. And he talks about, he said, my covenant will I not break. He said, God said, I won't break my covenant, my promises. The precious promises that we have this morning. God, they, they, are, they are in him. Yea and amen. All of God's promises, listen, are in him. You got to understand the things that he what he promised Abraham. It was, it was in him. It was in him. It, 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 the child may have came forth through Abraham and Sarah, but it was in him. And after everything had everything that was uh, made sense for a, for her to have a child and for him to be as old as he was, God brought it forth, didn't he? So all his promises are in him, and God is one that keeps promise. And I think as, as, as people of God, we have to hold on to that and understand that and write that in our hearts. You got to write in the tablets tab of your heart that God is a God that keeps promise. And understanding who we are, we are heirs. I love what it says to us in, in Hebrews, in Hebrews uh, 6 chapter. And he says, for verily, he says 6 and 16, for verily men swear by, by the greater. An oath of confirmation to them and end to all strife, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs, the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirming it by an oath. That means that you look at that word immutability, that means we got a God that doesn't change. Everything else may change, everything else may move. Isn't that right? We live in a universe and things are, things are moving and changing, you know. Hallelujah. The sun. Sun stays the same, but the, the, the moon moves away, doesn't it? It moves closer, gives us light, but everything is moving. That's why he's the father of all lights, the father of creation. And there's no changing in God, isn't that right? Whatever he has spoken, whatever he has said, we can hold on to it because he is a faithful God. He, and he's a God that's going to keep his covenants. I was talking about on Tuesday, some of you might have been listening to the Bible study. I said, God is looking for those who are going to be devoted to his purpose. And I was saying that that devotion has to be in our heart. It's got to be in your heart to be a person that's going to be devoted to God, devoted to God. Lord, I'm going to keep your promises. I'm going to keep your word. That's why David said what he said, hide it where? In my heart. We, we hear that so much sometimes it, it just becomes like a cliche, but we have to understand the earnestness that was in that when David said it. He said, hide it in me, Lord. I want, I want this, I want a great, re, a greater relationship with you. And he knew that the only way for him to have that great relationship, it had to be in his heart. That's why he said in Psalms 51, give me that clean heart. Give me the clean heart. Give me the right spirit. Hmm? Give me the heart that's, that's clean, that you're cleaning, that you're washing. Praise God. That you're doing the things that, that are necessary. Praise God. To get the things out of me. The things out of me, praise God, that I want to be moved and to be removed. See, that's why we got to understand when we come to talk about being devoted, if it's not in your heart to do it, you're not going to do it. If it's not in your heart to do it, because the Bible says out of the heart, what the mouth speaketh, out of the heart flow, what the issues of life, everything comes out of that, what, out of that, that heart. The center of your being, is that right? Everything flows from there. Our worship should flow from there. 
If we never hear another song, that, that worship should still be down on the inside of us. It should still be in our heart to give God praise, to give God glory, to do, what, do what's necessary to, to serve him. And that's why we want to be people that are devoted. God watches over those that love him and those that are devoted to him. Second Chronicles 16 and 9, and, and, I, and I often say this verse because I love it. But it says, but the eyes of, eyes of the Lord, he, and, and this is the prophet talking to King Asa, you know, talking to King Asa to, to, to let him know that about God, God was still powerful because God had uh, defeated a million Ethiopians for, 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 for Asa. And then a, a, a crowd came that was not that big, and Asa feared. Asa went and made covenant with somebody that God didn't want to make covenant with. But he says to him here, the prophet says to him, say, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the what? Whole earth. God sees everything. Yeah. That's why the Bible said nothing's hid from him. He sees everything. And his eyes run, what, to and fro. He sees your situation. He sees my situation. huh? He sees the brothers and the sisters' situation in Africa and, and, and Asia and all other countries. He sees their situation. His eyes run to and fro, a whole earth, the whole earth. He says, to show himself strong. For the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. That, I told you that word heart, perfect means to be loyal. To those that are loyal to God, God shows himself. God shows himself to those that are loyal. Hmm? That are loyal to him. Loyal means to be faithful to one's oath. Committed, obligated. One that's faithful to the oath that he made unto the Lord, committed to the things of God. He's obligated to serve God is, is what I want to do. It's in my heart, it's in my mind to worship you, Lord. And that's why we have to understand that it has become, become that obligation that I want to give God everything that he deserves, praise God. And listen, this loyalty is characterized by a showing of faithfulness. It, it, it showed by, this loyalty is showed by my what? By my faithfulness. By me being faithful to God. Abraham was called what? The father of faith because he was faithful to God. He was so faithful that God took all his sins, praise God, everything that he had done, praise God, and wiped his slate clean. I'll tell you that in Romans 4. He wiped his slate clean because, because of his faithfulness. He was called the, the father of faith. I know you're probably looking back and so, well, you know what, but he went and got that child and he did this and he did that, but he, you know, he called himself trying to help God with his promise. But he was still the father of faith because he blood, trusted and believed God because when God told him, take his son, his only son, he kind of rubbed it in. Take your son, your only son, up on this mountain and sacrifice him unto me. Not too many of us are going to sit here and want to sacrifice our children. I don't care how many we had. We don't really want to take them up there and say, what are we, God, are you sure? Am I really hearing you? Is this you or the devil? You said, take him up on the mountain and, and, and do what? The Bible says Abraham did it, didn't he? He trusted God. He trusted God and God, was, God saw his, his commitment. God saw his loyalty to believe God after waiting all those years for that child to be born. Something he'd been waiting for in his old age that God said, this is from here is going to come your promises. Because understand something, Abraham didn't see all the children of Israel. All he saw was Isaac. Hmm? That was it. He took him up on the mountain because, because he was faithful to God and he trusted God and he believed that God was able. It was one thing about him that, that I loved. If, if, if you look at Romans 4 right quick, Romans 4. And I love that when he, they say he didn't stagger. I like them to say he didn't stagger at the faith. Because sometimes things have hit you hard, is that right? Huh? You ever been hit hard almost? And, and, and something can hit you and make you stagger? Huh? 
Now you have to say, whoa, that was, that was, a, that was heavy. That was hard. That was heavy. You almost went out. Hmm? You almost fell. You almost gave up. But you shook it off. See, something is going to hit you. You keep living this life. If it ain't already happened, it's going to happen. Something will happen in your life, make you stagger. Bam. We just call it a sucker punch. You didn't see it coming. You didn't see it coming. You're like, where did that come from? I saw the right, but I didn't see that left. I thought I was, I thought my eyes, I thought I was focused on it. I thought I was, I was running this race and I, I was doing what I was supposed to do, but when it, something comes up, bam. He said, Abraham did not stagger at the faith. Look what it says, Romans 4 and 20. And it says, well, let's look 19 to read down. It says, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead. When he was about 100 years old, neither yet the, the deadness of Sarah's womb. He said he didn't consider it. He didn't pay no mind to it. It said he staggered. He didn't waver, not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to who? To God. And being fully persuaded. That means that his mind was made up. He was committed. He had a mind. I'm going to be loyal. I'm going to be loyal to this God that watches over me. This God that takes care of my every need. Hallelujah. This God that watches over my family. I'm going to, I'm going to be loyal to this God that's totally devoted to me. He said, he, he said, and being fully persuaded. See, that's what it takes. We, our mind, our heart has been made up to serve him. That when he had promised, he was able to perform. Do you believe whatever God has said to you that he is able to perform it this morning? Are you going to still trust in the vision though it tarries? Are you going to hold on to what God has spoken into your life? Are you just going to stagger and give up? See, if we just sometimes we just trust and believe and hold on to what God says, it would stop us from trying to make it up as we go along. Because we're just holding on to what God said, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I want you to show me the way to go. In all my ways, I'm going to do what I'm going to acknowledge who you. I'm going to acknowledge you. I'm going to let you direct my path. Stop just asking everybody else for a whole lot of questions because I'm allowing God to direct my path. I said, when we talk about being loyal, we talk about being faithful of heart, it talks about showing, it shows the character of faithfulness. It shows the character of commitment. It shows, a, it shows that, we're, that we're going to be those that are going to keep the vow, going to keep the promise. And listen to me, men are failing. Because their hearts are not set. They're not fixed on the things of God. That's what makes us wishy-washy. That's why folks in the, in the church, out the church, in the church, out the church. Because the enemy loves to keep you double-minded. He loves to keep you in a place where you're not, where you don't have the stability to stand and to wait on God and to, and to see, wait for the next thing that God is going to do. You're in a hurry. But sometimes the Bible said that we got to be still. Psalms 46 and 10. Still yourself. He said, still yourself and know, know that I am Jehovah Jireh. Still yourself and know that I'm El I'm Elohim. Unsteal yourself and see me move, see me work. Still. Still myself. I'm stilling myself in faith. I'm trusting God in faith. It ain't happened yet, but I'm trusting God. I'm going to hold on to what all that he has said. See, men are failing because their heart, their heart is not fixed. They said hard, I told you before, hard failure is one of the number one killers in this country. One out of four people die from heart failure. In the church it happens. People die from heart failure. Their heart is not fixed. Their heart is not fixed in serving. Their heart is not fixed on worshiping God. Their heart is not fixed on really giving God the glory. Praise God. So the enemy knows that. So he let a lot of situations, a lot of circumstances, and some things just come to move you away from your heart, move you away from the things that, that God has put in your heart. I was reading when it talked about how the, how, uh, the soil went forth and sowed the seed when Jesus was teaching that. 
And it said how the seed fell on the ground and, and the enemy came and immediately took it out of their heart. And I'm saying to myself, how can the enemy take this out of your heart? How can you just take something out of your heart that's been sold? And I realized it wasn't so much the enemy taking it, it was that we were giving it away. We're giving it away. We open the door. We don't protect. Guard your heart with what? Oh, diligence. We don't guard our heart. You say guard your heart with all, all diligence. See, we got to guard our heart. Because that's the place the enemy wants to get in. That's the place he wants to attack. So we give it away. We open our heart up to this and open our heart up to that, to all the things that we see around us in the world. Praise God. The enemy takes that seed away. That thing is taken away because, because we're not guarding it. These years I've been living for God, I've learned, I've got to guard my heart because it allowed things to happen to me and it knocked me down. It staggered me because I didn't guard my heart like I should have. You realize it's not just by coming to church and singing a song and reading a scripture. <laughs> it's about you being a guard over your heart, a guard over your character, a guard over your integrity, huh? That's what it's about. Joseph guarded his heart. He guarded his heart. Even when Miss Potiphar came against me, he guarded his heart. He was not going to do this sin against God or against Mr. Potiphar. He guarded his heart. He got him into trouble. Threw him into prison. He left his coat, but what they say, he kept his character. He stayed, he kept his integrity. Things was riding up on him, keeping his integrity. The promise that God had made to him was riding up on him, keeping his integrity by him holding on and guarding his heart. That one little thing could have messed everything up. It could have shut down everything that God had planned, but he held on. He didn't have all these books of the Bible that we got right now. He didn't have the workshops and the seminars and the retreats. He didn't have all the stuff that we have today. All old television. He had the Word Network and TVN. He didn't have all that. He didn't have these super pastors that we got today. He didn't have all these things. He didn't have nobody saying the next 60 seconds. He didn't have all that. He just held on. He held on to what thus says the Lord to him. His brothers didn't throw him away. That's rough when family turned against you, boy. His family had turned against him. His brothers. Same blood, same mud. They threw him away. And all he had to hold on to was what? That's why I'm talking about back to hiding it in your heart, buddy. Hallelujah. Because it's in your heart, and then out of your heart, your mouth will speak. Your mouth will speak the words. What came out of Jesus' mouth when the enemy came against him in Matthew 4? The devil says, it's written. Jesus says, it's written again. It's written, but it's written again. It's written again. The word, he was the word. He was tempted. The Bible said, all points, like we are, the temptation was against him. But he stood. He refused to bow. Even though he was weak from fasting, even though he was in human form, he stood the test. For who? For me and you. Y'all know he didn't have to get saved, right? It was, he stood the test for me and for you. That's why it's so imperative that we get our hearts fixed on this. If we get our hearts fixed on the things of God, then we won't fail. We see people fail. My little lifetime, I've seen people just fail. I've seen people just give up. Some people I thought would never leave the Lord. I'm praying that they get back. Talk the good one. You know, people talk a good fight. They can talk a good fight. They can just talk, 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 talk. Talk it, talk it, talk it. But the enemy don't care about your talking. He doesn't care about you, your boast. 
And it should be upon that. It should be, if you're going to boast, it should be in your heart to, for, to, for you to boast. It should be in your heart to declare the things of God. So our heart is, has to be fixed on who and who the Lord say he is. Look what David says in Psalm 57. 57 to 7. Let's start at 6 verse. He says, they have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have dug the pit before me into the, into the midst where they are falling themselves. He said, they, they did all this stuff. They're trying to get me. The enemy after you. He tried to do these things to me. Well, look what he said. My heart is fixed. Oh, God. He says again, my heart is fixed. Even with all this going on, even this with all this happening, he said, I'm going to sing and I'm going to give praise. I am going to sing and I'm going to give praise. Paul and Silas in the, in the, in the, in the, inside the prison in, in super solitary confinement, they sang and they gave praise. They gave worship unto God. Listen, we can't, we can't be no less. We can't let some of this little stuff around us begin to take us out and knock us down. I'm finding out more and more that people really don't want the truth. Really. People really, really don't want the truth. Even in the body, the church, they really don't want the truth. They, 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 like, they like the atmosphere. They like the singing. They like the stuff that goes on. They want the leadership to be entertainment. But some people really don't want the truth because when you start really dealing with the truth and hitting folks with the truth, you really find out who's who. You really find out how much they really want to live for God, how much they really want to serve God, how much they're willing to go through the different circumstances, the situations, how they're willing to really fight this fight. You really find out if their heart is fixed. Is it fixed? Look what he says. My heart is fixed. He said, you know what I'm going to do? He said, I'm going to worship. I'm going to worship. He said, wake up. He said, wake up, my glory. Wake my soft and heart. I myself will awake early. He said, I'm early. I'm going to seek you, Lord. He said, wake it up. He said, I'm going to get my stuff. I'm going to get my instruments of praise. I'm going to get the things that's necessary because if I don't have a crowd, it's still me and God. It's still me and God. In the cave of Abdullah, David realized it was still him and God. Regardless how the people felt, regardless how the people didn't worship, regardless how they didn't want their hearts to see, it's still me and God up in here. It's still me and God in this cave. It's still me and God in this pit. And Lord, I'm going to give you glory. I'm going to worship you just like Job did when everything falls apart and everybody leaves, praise God. And my wife turns against me. I'm going to fall down and worship you. I'm going to fall down and worship you. They think just good stories. They're given for our inspiration. They're given to inspire us to run the race. People want to be inspired. I'm always hearing stories of inspiration, sports figures, and all the things that people are doing, and, and all the things that's happening, praise God, with people that, 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 that have difficulties and, and maybe have lost limbs and, and things of this nature, you know, and how they continue to persevere. They don't give up, they don't quit. They don't quit. They keep on moving, keep on trying to, to uh, 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 be, with, be things that they may have never been before. They begin to reinvent themselves. He says, I'm going to wake up. He says, I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing thee. I will sing unto thee among the nations. See, sometimes you got to praise, praise the enemy. Praise the Lord. Excuse me. Praise the Lord. It, among the people. Man, you got to praise God in your house when everybody's sad. You got to let your kids and your wife know God is good. Wife, you got to do the same. You got to let everybody know the Lord is good. Look up, husband. Trust God. 